Hey everybody, Samsara here, and welcome back to the channel. In the early 2000s, I watched the movie Who Killed the Electric Car? Ever since then, it's been a passion of mine to own and to drive an electric vehicle. It's only been in the past five years or so that EVs have started to become more affordable. Even then, there are many people that debate whether or not EVs are actually that clean. One talking point in the debate against electric vehicles is that the batteries themselves require a lot of energy to produce and that the process is very toxic. I'm incredibly excited about the opportunity for companies inside the United States to both source and manufacture critical battery materials here. This is important because we can be ensured that the processes used to generate these metals are cleaner and waste less energy. The clip I'm going to share with you today is from the NY Best Conference. It features Shailesh Upredi, the chairman of IM3NY, also known as Imperium 3. If you have any questions about the company or about battery manufacturing in the US, please drop some comments below. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Shailesh Upredi to the uh, stage. Shailesh. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Stacey. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, pleased to be here today. And uh, I would be presenting our company, IM3NY, that is setting up uh, one of the largest uh, lithium ion cell manufacturing facility right here in Binghamton, in Endicott, the birthplace of IBM. So um, IM3NY, uh, primarily, you know, we started almost 10 years back uh, inventing a molecule in the lab. So it's really exciting to see how that molecule had gone through different phase of development and already used in machines. So today we are proudly powering some of the devices and systems uh, for US military and many other commercial applications. So uh, with that uh, in, uh, in the background, uh, as a company, we are really uh, driving the growth of domestic manufacturing, the local ecosystem where we can qualify more US-based component suppliers that can marry well with our molecule and we can scale in a very cost-effective manner and really produce high performance, safe and reliable batteries. Uh, or we are obviously aiming high. We, we don't see batteries just as a component powering the electric car or, or your new next microgrid or you know, uh, your portable devices. We see uh, this part of the clean and green energy transition. Also, we see this as a uh, sustainability for the future. So with that in mind, uh, the entire team that we have built in last 10 years that include cutting as uh, you know, research that we have been doing in Binghamton University, uh, done by top notch scientists and some of the new members that have joined us in last couple of years to really take that molecule and, and start the mass or the uh, high scale manufacturing. So we are powering the world that transition to the clean energy now and for the many life cycle to come. So that's, that's really the mission that drives the team, which is headed by Chaitanya Sharma, who is working as our chief uh, uh, executive officer. Uh, he comes with the Tesla and, and some of the uh, lithium uh, supply chain, Lithium America background, uh, also supported by uh, some of the top notch, um, I would say uh, manufacturing team, highly experienced from uh, component to cell to system manufacturing background where high speed, high precision become very, very important. And when we are doing it first time, we really want to do it right. So, so that experience uh, counts and it's very, very important for us while we bring the new technology to the market. Uh, of course, this is uh, supported by a world-class uh, board uh, that brings a very diverse background uh, from technology to mining to finance. Um, and uh, just as a summary uh, company, uh, IM3, while you know the uh, parent company C4V started the work in 2011, 2012, uh, IM3 as an entity that evolved as a consortium where we actually brought all the right uh, kind of partnerships together, right type of financing together. Um, our first step is to really produce cells that are the basic component of battery. In a battery, almost 80% cost is the cell. Um, and that uh, is uh, supported by obviously New York State, uh, the team and a lot of local uh, partners also come from the supply chain uh, in the industry. Uh, we have so far raised in, in excess of $108 million. And, and uh, that is really now taking us to the first stage of the growth, which is one gigawatt hour. 
So one gigawatt are going to be our annual production that will begin in a few weeks from now. Um, and uh, in order to achieve that, of course, um, you know, technology is the key. Technology for us is the backbone of the entire system. So a quick glimpse about uh, what we deliver in, in the form of the technology. Uh, we have in last 10 years, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, developed this cobalt and nickel free chemistry that can deliver uh, the desired power and energy capacity in a, in a very safe and economical manner. So having uh, this uh, new chemistry that can really meet uh, different level of performances for different end applications and producing that at the lowest cost is our uh, first goal in, in phase one. While we uh, develop this technology, uh, the scientists and, and the team, uh, the engineering team is not stopping right there. We are in very advanced stages of bringing some of the future generations of our product uh, that will include, uh, you know, chemistries which will enhance the energy density, the safety, and of overall, uh, you know, drive the overall cost down. Uh, with that, uh, here are some of the key uh, uh, product development and, uh, you know, cell research capabilities we have. We, we work in uh, in very cohesive manner. We have very strong collaborations with not only companies, but various national labs, universities, and uh, many startups in New York State, as well as across the country. We work with uh, almost, I think, three or four national labs. So, so this whole drive of scaling and adopting local and US-based, not only the component supplies, but equipments, as well as the, the, the technology supply chain that we call, because we would want to be the home for the scale up so if, if any new startup or any new company has a component that can really drive the energy up, uh, safety up and cost down, we want to be the first owner of it or be the home for it. So there is a whole unique business model built around uh, how we scale this technology, but also how we adopt and, and really partner with the domestic supply chain. And that's, I think, one of the very important point because many companies we have, we have seen in last 10 year in battery space failed not because of a poor technology or funding it's it's primarily how the business model was built and and how they failed in the later stage of the growth journey and most most of it has to be uh, most of it has to uh, do with the uh, how you know manufacturing failed or how you know uh, lab scale or pilot scale learning couldn't translate into the mass production so with that uh, I have a few more slides. I know uh, we have very limited time, uh, but uh, in terms of the product design, when we uh, when we are building and developing our uh, next generation product or even the current product, safety always remain at the core of the, the innovation and everything around it is built to make sure that we can achieve the rest of the performance matrix in a very cost-effective manner. And that goes from uh, right at the molecular level, then component, which is cell, and the system design. However, if, if the chemistry itself is not safe, for example, you know, lithium cobalt oxide or many oxide-based systems where, you know, enough oxygen inside the cell, so it doesn't matter how tightly you, you know, package it or put it in a device and put all the bells and whistles on your thermal management or battery management, the failure at the core level could lead to thermal runaway situations. So we're really focusing at the core of the chemistry or the system which is like cell and the chemistry and make sure that uh, the development uh, around that is, is uh, you know, uh, is part of your, your journey here. So um, while uh, the components and, and the cell and the basic research is very, very important, I think uh, taking that technology from lab and making that technology available in the form of a product is, is a totally different challenge. And uh, we, uh, as a team here in IM3NY, have been dealing with it, uh, have been dealing with it for the last three years, and really build a very cohesive model to overcome those challenges. Uh, it, it's a it's a good balance of your past learning and and what is available on the manufacturing level right now, whether it's uh, IoT, whether it's Industry 4.0, or uh, you know co-location of some of the components really improve the yield and and the precision. Uh, we also uh, look into how these components really uh, impact your cost early stage and as you scale and their availability so so you know availability of the of the high precision component in a cost effective manner while that scale is happening and and you're committing you know certain volumes to your customer is very very important 
uh, what you're seeing on screen is is not just a rendering. It's it's a real picture uh, with with that building that exists today. Uh, we are going to host um, our first gigawatt hour line inside uh, this building, uh, which is part of the Huron campus, uh, the birthplace of IBM. Uh, Ten minute drive from here. Uh, we anticipate that June uh, 2022, uh, when uh, the line will be fully automated and and we'll start uh, selling uh, product to the customers. Although some of the small volumes we we will start seeing in a couple of weeks, so within this year. So very very proud of uh, uh, the team that you know we have finally uh, been able to put together all the ingredients so that we can start our uh, local manufacturing. Uh, also, while the new factories are being built, the new products are, are brought to the market, uh, we do not want to build a brand new old factory. That's how we call it, because a lot of these factories are built with 20 year, 30 year old processes. So, so we are looking into the perfect balance of what exists and how we can innovate it without disrupting the manufacturing processes uh, and the control and the quality uh, everything uh, you know related to the mass production uh, infrastructure. So, so there is a good balance set up uh, today. Uh, we are collecting a lot of data. We have millions of data points on the ingredients, uh, which is raw material that goes inside a cell or a battery, how it leads to different level of performances, and all the learning from that, how we can translate on the manufacturing floor. So we're really looking at building uh, smart factories that will learn by itself and repair by itself so that with time you can uh, you know really improve the manufacturing yield and you know obviously you know increase your profits uh, and more importantly uh, make it in, in the greenest way possible so um, with uh, with that uh, i think i'm almost towards the time um, I would skip a few slides here. One of the products that we have been developing is not just about the molecule, how we really interact with these uh, molecule using computers. So a lot of data collection, a lot of analytics that goes inside, not only in the product development, but eventually uh, the, the implementation of that on the manufacturing floor so that we can effectively compete with the Asian prices because end of the day, we need to sell these uh, batteries to end customer in the market and just performance alone is not enough. So how to make these tech or high-tech batteries available in a very cost-effective manner. I think uh, we are kind of combining the molecule, the, high, the scale of manufacturing with the software and, and uh, smart manufacturing uh, techniques. Um, with that, uh, I would be uh, closing with the remark. We're really looking at uh, NEOC uh, being at the center of the global innovation in the battery work. Uh, we have been uh, stabilizing a lot of, uh, I would say, volatile supply chain for the last 10 years that otherwise affects the cost and also have, uh, ha has been the reason why domestic manufacturing really not succeeded so far because a lot of innovations, every chemistry that we see in the market uh, innovated in the U.S., but hardly any domestic manufacturing. So uh, we are really looking at... Um, as much as possible, obviously today itself, we have 80% domestic content. So we have one of the very few giga scale factories that will have no reliance on Asian supplies, but also will be among the leader in the cell manufacturing to have a full domestic supply chain. So we are trying to head towards the 100%. And um, I think there is some, uh, yeah, I, I, so, something happened during period of conversion looks like. Yes, it's, it's recorded, that's, that's our secret, uh, as you can see. So basically, you know, uh, innovative science and, and making that science available in a sustainable way and it's through a sustainable supply chain is the key message here. And obviously the 100% domestic supply chain. Uh, with that, um, uh, I would end my presentation and we do have a table outside. Uh, our senior vice president for sales and marketing, Paul Stratton will be around. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously I'll be around whole day, happy to answer that. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, welcome again in Binghamton.